another kind of problem, and it looks like a very interesting one. Mary Jones is dialing up for what appears to be a heavy date, and if it's okay, we'll butt in for a few minutes and see what's going on. Well, what's this? Checking up? Working from diagrams? Following instructions? Absolutely. Scientific art of beauty. The latest from Loveliness Laboratories. Research to the rescue, helping Mary emphasize all the nice things in her very nice face, showing her how to minimize certain features, how to accent others. Lady Science has done all right by you. You sure look swell. Uh-oh, now she's gone and ruined everything. But Beauty Science could have helped her here, too. Let's go to Beauty Headquarters. Yes, Hollywood. And meet famous Paramount makeup man, Eddie Sands, who thinks that glasses like hairdos can flatter the features. That just like eyebrow and lip lines, the lines of one's glasses can bring out good points, make bad points inconspicuous. When an actress's role calls for specs, it's just part of the normal makeup problem to Eddie, and the way he's solved this problem can be of tremendous value to the 10 million American women outside of Hollywood who have to wear glasses, not to play in pictures, but because of eyesight. Eddie's drawings give you the lowdown based on two fundamental types of faces, the round face and the long face. First, the hair. High and close for the round face, but low and wide for the long face. Lipstick next. Applied as much up and down as possible on the round face, but the long face needs horizontal lines like this. Now for the eyeglasses. For the round face, an arched bridge and a dropped lower curve to help correct that circular appearance. The long face needs just the opposite, an almost flattened upper edge and lenses with wide, shallow curves. Now, if you don't believe that these added lines are effective, watch closely while we switch hairdos, lip shape, and eyeglasses from one face to another. As you see them now, they're okay, but wait. There, the shape of the face is the same, but how differently it looks with wrong makeup and glasses. Let's put everything back. There, much better, in fact, perfect. Now let's visit a factory where they make optical glass and see just how modern manufacturing technique makes possible lenses that not only aid eyesight, but appearance. Here's the beginning of a long, intricate procedure, carefully mixing the various ingredients from which fine, modern optical glass is produced. Ingredients like silica, barium, lead, lime are rotated in drums like these until the proper proportions are thoroughly blended. Furnaces in an optical glass factory have to be just the right heat, and they have to be kept at just the right heat as the various basic ingredients become molten. That's why temperature readings are taken frequently with delicate pyrometers. And after 24 hours of cooking and stirring, a miracle occurs. The contents of the special clay pots are now liquid glass, white hot, 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. And now comes one of the most fascinating operations in the making of optical glass, pouring. Right before your eyes, as the roller passes over it, liquid becomes solid. A hot molten mass on one side becomes a hot solid sheet on the other. A sheet of exactly the right thickness for additional processing. See a change color going from white hot to red hot. And that's the signal for it to be pushed into the annealing ovens, where it will be cooled gradually to room temperature at which it can be safely handled. Much later now, and much cooler now. Also, a few cracks, but they don't hurt. Yes, the sheet of glass is ready for cutting into squares, but not every square is used. As the cutter cuts, he's also looking for defects. He assorts and discards, as does everyone who works with the glass from now on. Actually, only about 25% of the original pouring finds its way into finished spectacles. Now reheated and softened, the squares are shaped into approximate lens forms. First, roughly in an oven. Then more exactly shaped in a molding press. They're not squares any longer and they're not called squares now, they're called blanks. A 
typical inspection. And there are as many as 45 different inspections throughout manufacturing. Then getting ready for grinding. This black liquid is pitch. It's poured into a heavy form and when the surplus is removed, a coating of it remains. Into this, the preheated blanks are carefully placed. The pitch holds them firmly in position, whether on the bowl or on this drum each symbolic of the countless forms used in the delicate grinding process. Hundreds of ingenious machines grinding millions of highly complicated basic lens prescriptions. A series of operations requiring the utmost accuracy and precision. machines and polishing now until the blanks become as clear as the finest crystal. A bath and a special cleansing solution and when they emerge from the suds their official name has changed from blanks to lenses. Yes, they're almost ready for frames. But not quite. Centers of vision have to be carefully marked on each lens and the proper axis must be determined. And more in the endless round of inspections. Experts checking on correct curvature, optical centers, and at the same time looking carefully for imperfections. Then the manufacturing process is over. The lens is ready for your specialist and his final grinding to your own prescription and face requirements. Basic shaping of the lens is done by various cutting devices. The edging is done on an abrasive wheel. Yes, the fundamental round lens can be fashioned into any one of 300 shapes to help the appearance as well as eyesight. Which brings us back to Mary Jones. Still don't like your old specs, Mary? Neither do we. Take them off. They're not right for your face. But these are a set of three, for just as a woman varies her wardrobe for different occasions, so can she find exciting variations in her glasses. These for formal wear. These for sports, same lens but tinted. And these for informal day wear, fitting right into the pretty picture that's Mary's face. Yes, science has entered every field of beauty today. No matter what the problem or what type of face we have, advice is available to us. So that in a highly competitive world where appearance counts for so much, each of us can always look his best.